I wrote on the board the name of the, the sharing, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's uh, Prisoners in Heart. And there was a time years ago <clears throat> that I shared a, a sharing, it was a blog, uh, called Prisoners, uh, uh, Prisoner of the Lord. And uh, this, this is not that, but this has some elements that I, I want to bring out in relationship to that. But um, uh, so uh, where I want to go is in Psalm, Psalm 69, and it's verse 26 through 33. And instead of just reading the whole thing at the beginning, we're just going to go down at one verse at a time, starting with verse um, 26. Um, and it says, um, and before I, it, it'll be self-evident, but um, <clears throat> this is David, and he's going through attacks, and he's going through false accusations, and he's, you know, those can be very hard. All the, all of the things that the enemy can muster against us, and yet, again, we have life, we have another life, and we are thankful for that. Father, I'm just making that a prayer. We're thankful for that every day. Um, so he says in verse 26, For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. And um, turn this thing off. So there's persecution uh, to him that they have smitten. And they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. And and what we know, but we'll see it more here in these scriptures, is that this has to be talking about the, uh, the enemy, but it's also talking about the, the Lord allowing certain things so that he might bring forth the life and nature of of the Lamb, the life and nature of the the one who is seated at your right hand, Father, um, that you exalted above all others. And um, but it is under these circumstances and these hard situations that that we really see that. I mean, we never would have even really understood that Jesus was a Lamb had he not come and died on a cross. I mean, everybody thought he was going to be a king and a this and that, and you know, uh, everything but being a slaughtered lamb. <clears throat> so, um, in this verse right here, this is either the situation of like 2,000 years ago or longer than that, actually, um, in Isaiah 53, when it talks about uh, the Lord and he was smitten. Uh, and he was uh, uh, accused and all of these things. And yet there we find that he was smitten of God. Not just the evil doers, which did do that, but smitten of God with purpose. And uh, so it's either that or it's uh, like in Romans 8, it's, it's us, it's him in us. And that's happening not just... Uh, in a recorded book of Isaiah 53 to him, but it's happening to him in us um, going through these kind of circumstances. Uh, Romans 8 says this, <clears throat> Who sh uh, and you got to love this, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. And so he's saying that all of these, these things that came against Jesus in Isaiah 53, that, that, that probably, I mean, according to the record of it, were happening also to Paul, uh, and then written in the New Testament, written in the Old Testament, in Isaiah 53, written in the New Testament, here in one of many places, uh, where going through all these hard things, and yet he goes on to describe it. He says, uh, uh, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. For thy sake. See? Um, and it goes on to say, we are, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 
But then verse 37 in, the, in Romans 8 there says, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so a lot of people read those scriptures and they, they assume, oh yeah, see, we're not going to go through that. That's not what we're going to go through. We're going to, to be more than a conqueror. But he's describing more than someone who uh, conquers this. They conquer it by life. They conquer it by the living God, by the living Christ, by the living one who indwells earthen vessels that are, you know, you can read that in, in 2 Corinthians, you know, and we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We're, dis, you know, disturbed and attacked and all of this on every side. It's always really the same story, and that is, that yes, we're saved and we're born again, but we're, there's something more going on in our daily lives beyond that, and it's Christ crucified. So back to, um, to Psalm 69. In verse 27, he says, Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. So there's, it's, a, it's a recognition that on the part of, quote-unquote, the evildoers or the person person or persons that are doing the the attacking that um, they recognize that they're adding this iniquity unto iniquity okay and and what it's talking about is two two iniquities if you will uh, the iniquity of being a beast that would attack the weak but also iniquity unto iniquity the iniquity of attacking Christ in us, not just us, but but it be in Him. And so, I mean, that's God's Son that, that's being attacked in that. So verse 28 says, <clears throat> Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. So here it's not talking about the, the book of the saved. It says the book of the living. Um, it's It's that, and we'll see that a little more towards the end, that this, this to God, this in His heart, I mean, our salvation is wonderful and will be for wonderful throughout all eternity, but God didn't get saved. <laughs> He's always been there. His greatest joy was that He put His Son in all of us and we, we give Him back His Son in the manner that He wants it. And this is the same thing, and I'm I don't want to get too far off, but, but the tabernacle. And when he first said, I, you know, offer on all, the altar the morning and evening sacrifice. And that was all of it's just a shadow that he wants his son in every, every day and every circumstance. And that we would have such a heart back for the salvation. Now we're going to give you something more. We're going to give you the son of, your, of the father's love. The son of the father's love. So, um, uh, and, and again, here, see, it's talking about life, the, the book of the living. These are issues of life. <clears throat> so, verse 29 says, but I am poor and sorrowful. Okay, so he's, he's acknowledging the thing that you kind of always have to do in these situations, and that is you have to be the humble one. You know, we want, well, I want them to humble themselves. But he wants us to allow that humble one, uh, a slaughtered lamb, not just a lamb. Uh, that's what he desires out of us. And it says, let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. Well, his salvation is always the salvation of the soul. It's always that. It always goes back to that. Um, and especially David, but in the Psalms, it always goes back to the salvation of the, the soul. Um, and uh, so back in uh, verse 30 and 31, he says, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him. I love this thought. Paul talks about it too. Uh, to magnify the Lord, it'd be like taking a great big magnifying glass and making him bigger than he is right now to us, you know, <clears throat> more of him. Uh, I will 
Um, I will praise the name of him with a song. I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hooves. And uh, sometime or another, I'll do a blog or a teaching because I've, I've spent a lot of time looking at those verses that, that talk about that. And um, to, uh, to just examine these things a little more deeply. But, but why? Why would the Lord, uh, uh, he said, it shall please the Lord better. This is a better sacrifice. This is better. And why? Because God wants things that flow from our heart better than he wants uh, religious observances. We can all go to church. We can all read our Bible. We can all pray. We, all, we can do all that. But he wants what flows from our hearts to him. From our hearts to him. So, um, verse 32 says this, The humble shall see this and be glad. Okay, so he was, he was the humble up here. I will praise the Lord with my, my song. <clears throat> the humble shall see this about the, the, the kind of offering that God wants and shall be glad. And I just love this last part or uh, of, of verse 32. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek the Lord. Oh my gosh. Oh my, oh my gosh. Your heart shall live. He didn't say it'll be, ble you. well, you know, like Texas, well, bless your heart. You know, it's not, this is living is way, how your heart shall live. And you'll live by your heart instead of by the circumstances or by what the devil's doing or by what people are saying or by what's, a, what's you know, a everything. You'll be able to live by that. And your heart shall live that, that seek him. That seek God. Now, there's more to that that, and we're not going to get into. But just the fact that it's saying it didn't say that seek the Lord. It says that seek God. Okay, the three in one, the triune God, the the understanding of what that means beyond a doctrine of the Trinity. Oh, if you seek God. You're seeking to know them as they were in eternity and not just as they are in their uh, relationship to us in the earth. It's beautiful. It's truly beautiful. So, um, so verse 32, the humble shall see this and be glad and your heart shall live that seek God. Verse 33, for the Lord heareth the poor and despised and despiseth not his prisoners. Okay, so the Lord hears the poor, or the needy, or the broken, or the humble, um, and um, and despiseth not his prisoners. And so here we go. The prisoners in heart. Um, <clears throat> well, the word prisoners. Let's talk about that just a little bit. You know, if you can picture being cut away from everybody else, being, you know, accused, being put in a situation where you can't do what you want to do or you, you know, um, it, it's, it's hard, but we have examples. I mean, that's what a prisoner is. Somebody else usually has, has either accused you or somebody else has... Uh, taken you and put you in that. Um, it's, it's a person who's been restricted in certain ways. <clears throat> but we discussed this before. 
uh, in relationship to the prisoner of the Lord, but this is prisoners in heart. It's the, we, to be the prisoner of the Lord is one thing, and, and Paul is that, and many have written of that, but to be a prisoner in heart for the Lord is different. Okay, so he's, he's, Paul has chosen this way. He didn't just get thrown in there. Um, and uh, I, I'm going to make this statement. He didn't just get thrown in there and then catch on to it. It says that he is, you know, that he is the prisoner of the Lord, that he's chosen this. Okay, but, you know, you see this over in... Uh, Ephesians 3, verse 1. Uh, he's chosen this to be the prisoner of the Lord, to be a prisoner in heart for God and for others. So Ephesians 3, 1 says this, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. That's, that's for God and for others. Um, <laughs> living in a dungeon is not, you know, a reward in the sense of it's not what most people would, would think of. But Paul has, gone, has chosen a route that is going to lead to those kind of things. Okay, and um, so usually we think of being a prisoner, then we got to get out. Somebody's got to get us out. Jesus has got to get us out. Do you ever play the game Monopoly? Uh, they have in there a card, and it's a get out of jail card. And everybody wants the get out of jail card. Okay, it's a bit, it's like if, if, if you talk to how many people played Monopoly, you'd be surprised. How many? So many. And then you say, okay, what is one of your best parts that you could get out of that? Um, get out of jail card. Everybody would know the get out of jail card. Well, that's because we all want to just get out of jail. We're not prisoners in heart. We want to get out of it. See, instead of choosing it for God, for God and others. Um, an example, I, and probably where Paul learned, started learning this, was over there in, in uh, Acts chapter 16 when he and uh, Silas were thrown into to jail, and, and they're in there, and instead of being a prisoner, they become a little, uh, uh, I was going to say a quartet, but there's only two of them singing. <laughs> And they're just singing to the Lord. They're just, they're with the Lord. They're, they're evidently prisoners to the Lord instead of to the circumstances. And they're just singing. And there was no, I mean, it doesn't give us any sort of an idea that they were doing that, you know, because God was going to open the gate for them to get out. They opened the, the prison doors. They were just prisoners in heart and just being with the Lord no matter what the circumstances are. And um, so uh, Ephesians 4 1 says this, and this is, uh, we were just quoting Ephesians 3 1. This is Ephesians 4 1. So he's wrapping it up in Ephesians. He's He's trying to reach into their hearts to see if, you know, they want to be a prisoner of the Lord. And this says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. So what is the worthy vocation that we've been called? Uh, it's a prisoner, and the prisoner is beseeching us. I, Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation which you've been called to. Because that's, going back to verse 1 of chapter 3, he hasn't left the theme that he's a prisoner. 
you know, and a prisoner in heart. So um, the, the prisoner is beseeching them to come join him in this calling. Prisoners in heart. Prisoners in heart. So what is, what is the heart of the prisoner? What's at the heart of being a, a prisoner for the Lord? Well, uh, I just happened to notice this while I was searching this out, that the heart of being a prisoner is the Son. The very word Son is at the heart of being a prisoner. The Son is there. It's, he's at the heart of this. The, it is, it is that spirit and that nature. And what's funny is that, that the son was, you know, he was uh, hidden. The son was hidden within the prisoners. <laughs> Folks, shh, okay, it's a coincidence, or okay, Randy, you're off your rocker, and all this kind of stuff. But me, I'll just give you this and then I'll stop. Me searching this out and just trying to hear from the Holy Spirit and trying to walk with Him through these things as He spoke. And, and, uh, and then all, all of a sudden get to the end. And, and the way I've even got it on my iPad is that it is, the sun is in red in the middle of the, the, the word prisoner. And I, because I just looked at it and realized that has to be, and, and you know, well, is it in that way in the Greek or in the Hebrew? <laughs> Probably not, I don't know. All I know is that that literally speaks that the sun is the center of who a prisoner in heart is to the Lord. So let's, let's close in prayer. Father, I just love you, and I love your Son, and I love the Spirit of God who is so faithful. He won't speak of himself. We never hear anything of all of the things that he's gone through with rebellious Christians or, or, or lackadaisical, half-hearted, fence-riding Christians. We never hear any of that. He just remains faithful, not to a duty, but to a heart, to a heart for lifting up the Son and lifting up the Father, you, Father, and you, Jesus, as the Son, the Father-Son relationship. And we, we know what Jesus has gone through, and we never heard really the Father when Jesus was put on the cross and was suffering. We never heard him cry out. But you were separated from your son when he became sin, Father. And we realize that there is something hidden in this reality of in heart, being a prisoner to these, to one another in this way. And I pray that whatever words that I've spoken here, whatever words that I believe that you've given us here, can be more than a, a blog, can be more than a second witness or whatever of, of a certain kind of teaching but could be the Holy Spirit moving to reach into our hearts and say, let the Son be the Spirit and the heart of this way, because He is, Father, the way and the truth and the life and the nature that you put within us. So eternally thank you, thank you Father, Eternally, thank you, Jesus. Eternally, thank you, Holy Spirit.
And may you be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys.